doing today is part of our annual monitoring of paddlefish in lakes statewide. So we're on Grand Lake and this is one of the, the biggest lakes for paddlefish in Oklahoma and so that's where we put a lot of our focus. Right behind you. Paddlefish is kind of a unique species and in Oklahoma it's a high profile important species. There are inherent difficulties with managing a fish like a paddlefish because they live a long time. They can live 25 or more years. Uh, they don't spawn or recruit every year and they take a long time to mature. So a female isn't going to be able to lay eggs for 10 years. And so between 10 and when she dies of old age, she may only have a couple times to spawn and that's because they, they require very spe specific river conditions to spawn and specific habitats. So that's something we call episodic recruitment. So we're really concerned with monitoring the stock. We don't want to have to replace the stock if it is over harvested. Uh, so my job is to make sure that we're providing opportunities for anglers to catch paddlefish, but to catch them and keep them responsibly. First thing we do is check male or female. This one's female. It doesn't have the secondary characteristic of tubercles, which are little bumps on the head. Um, we will make a little incision with our Swiss Army knife right here on the dentary bone so that we can apply this uniquely coated band. 25011, and they're stamped do not remove, and you can see as I apply it, it kind of has a little locking mechanism. So we don't want anglers to just pull bands off and throw the fish back. We'll measure it from the eye to the fork of the tail, 973, we don't measure the rostrum, it's just kind of a standard for this species. With this thing, I'm checking for a tiny little tag made of magnetized metal. And if I found one, that would indicate that this fish came from a hatchery. Um, it's a wild reproducing stock, but we, we release a small number every year so that when we do find them, we can age the fish and it contributes to our known age verification research. So when anglers catch these fish with bands on them and either report it or we see it at the Paddlefish Research Center through Angler Harvest, we can then calculate what our estimated uh, population is and how many are being taken out by anglers. 1660. Ten fifty-five. We like to call paddlefish a very hardy species. They can—they seem to be able to deal with a lot of stress. 
um, without any ill effects, both physical stress and you know temperature stress, oxygen stress. Uh, there are published studies out there that have compared them to other species and it's really remarkable how much they can deal with. Uh, and that, that's kind of important to us because we're managing paddlefish using a catch and release two days a week. Uh, so no harvest is permitted on Monday or Friday. And it was important to us to make sure that that releasing fish is not bad for them. There's no delayed mortality. So some of these fish we're, we're pulling in our nets have wounds or scars indicating they've been hooked before and released. And in most circumstances, it, it does not have a permanent effect on the livelihood of the fish. They seem to heal well, survive well, and in fact, many fish have indications that they've been caught and released multiple times. So what we see right here is a, what we call a hook scar, evidence this fish has been caught and released. You can see it's kind of scar tissue, healed skin. These are very hardy fish and they can deal with most wounds and injuries. Um, we see much worse than this, but it's important that we see these guys surviving being caught and released because we use catch and release as a management tool. So on the topic of episodic recruitment, it's really interesting that in 2015 we saw really spectacular water conditions. We had a lot of flooding statewide and although that causes damage in some places, it's really good for a fish like paddlefish. Um, it, it provides opportunities for them to, to travel upstream to specific spawning habitats such as gravel, which is typically out of the water. Uh, but it also keeps the lake elevated for long enough to where those fish that hatch can settle out into nursery areas. It also uh, limits predation because it, it reduces the density. Um, so pretty much 2015 was the perfect conditions for paddlefish. So right now we are actually catching a lot of yearling fish in our nets. And our nets are designed to catch large adults. So this is a really good sign. We've had an excellent recruitment in 2015. And that's, that's really a relief for me as a manager because I know that in years to come we're going to have spectacular opportunities for anglers to catch paddlefish and I don't have to worry about anything right now. I know that we have that in the bank and that we're going to be utilizing that spawn for many years to come. Although it's kind of a beautiful day at the moment, we, we do all this work in winter for several reasons. Uh, we're looking for colder water temperatures. Our target is 10 degrees Celsius and that's because about that time these fish start staging upstream. They're kind of making preparations for spawning. Um, it's also helpful because colder temperatures means lower stress on the fish. 1067 female. Um, so I can have this fish out on the on the table for several minutes without really causing any permanent harm. It also, having them congregated up here also makes it easier for us to catch them. So what we're doing is mark recapture. So we're trying to contact as many fish as possible, put bands on them with the least amount of effort. So doing it right now is a lot smarter than coming a month ago. deploy the nets at sunrise, but we don't wait until eight hours to go check them. We go out in the morning and uh, we check the nets around 9.30. And if it's got fish in it, we'll pull the fish out. So they're, not, they're only in the net a couple hours. It reduces stress. Oklahoma has a very active paddlefish management program, uh, really nothing like it in the country. Um, other state uh, 
fish and wildlife departments do manage paddlefish and a lot of the techniques we're doing here they are, are, are doing as well. We've actually advised some other states on some of our techniques and given them tips on how to catch paddlefish effectively. But uh, due to the fact that we have this unique program which is harvest based with our row donation program, uh, we have additional responsibility to make sure that we are managing the stocks responsibly and providing those opportunities for anglers, but at the same time, not allowing them to exploit the resource. Thank you.